What do you really think is the level of concern for Carson at this point? The level of concern was in the offseason when I told everyone he was no good at the end of last year. Literally, he, literally, he wasn't good at the end of last year. But he had no and weapons. And people were acting like he was in the MVP conversation. He had no weapons. He did worse against every one of those sad sack NFC East teams than other quarterbacks in the same division, including backups and rookies, did against those same teams. He breathes life into the opponent. When Forget about accuracy, right? Like, Arm angle, all that stuff. Come on, Doug Peterson's being a little slick right now. He has to. He's in the middle of his season. This is his quarterback. It's, it's decision making. It's the fact that Carson Wentz won't run his offense half the time. Carson Wentz is ask, acting like he already has the equity to do that, or the or the or the uh, judgment to do it. Already, what has he done? Think about the week one of the season. What are you up three scores? The opponent's dead in the water. You breathe life into them with 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 turnovers same thing the next week you have a chance to come back turnovers fumbles intercept trying to force things in he's been his decision making forget about the accuracy he has he can do things that very few others can do and make a throw like oh my god that's like Mahomes-esque and then on the next two consecutive plays unlike Mahomes you're like what what was that and that yeah that pass may not have been so accurate but it's not so much accuracy that I'm really talking about with Wentz it's decision making. That's why Jalen Hurts is on the squad. You can't tell, well, they want depth at backup quarterback. Really? You can't go sign a guy for depth at backup quarterback? Yeah, you can. You don't use a second round pick that you could have packaged to get a receiver if he has no weapons. The best receiver in the draft, you don't keep that to draft a quarterback unless you plan on maybe having to play him. The difference between that and Green Bay is Green Bay was like, yeah, Aaron Rodgers getting older. You know, we have a succession. We have a plan going forward. Mm -hmm. And Aaron Rodgers had a reason to be mad about mm -hmm. that. But Carson Wentz, he's not playing up to his contract. And unless in, I'm telling you this right now, unless Jalen Hurts shows nothing in practice, if this continues, it's going to be Hurts' job. Well, listen, I, I kind of disagree with you there. But before I do that, I just wanted to take a moment. Uh, because obviously this is HBCU yes. week, and I wanted to give especially you two a special thanks because last year we had over 1,200 people register, pre-register. We generated over $4 million in scholarships. This year is already over 3,500 that have pre-registered. We're expecting to generate even more, create more scholarships. I know you said you got a daughter at an HBCU, so I love that. Mm -hmm. I just want to thank all of y'all, and that's, of why, that's one of the reasons why Troy Vincent is coming on here. So I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Let me say this. HBCUweek.org. That's right. That's right. HBCUweek.org. Yes. yes, that Read is about true. The four million. Thank you. Let's beat the four are made to be broken. There we go. Right? That's Let's right. Let's get it. Let me say this to you about Carson Wentz, getting back to him. Here's what I think you're missing. I think you're being kind of unfair to him in this regard. Alshon Jeffrey, Nelson Aguilar, when he was on the team, they weren't there for They missed like five or six games, respectively. Deshaun Jackson only played three games. He got hurt the second game of the season. That was his deep threat. He still had Ert, uh, Zach Ertz. He still had Goddard. You know what? But the Miles Sanders, the Greg Wards of the world, and stuff like that. I mean, what he did last year in propelling the Philadelphia Eagles to the playoffs. I mean, he was working with smoke and mirrors half the time. And somehow, some way, he got them in the postseason. And then what does he do? He gets hurt in the first quarter. I think it was like the second possession against Seattle in the playoffs for crying out loud. Let's think about when Carson Wentz was an MVP candidate. What happened? He goes down. Nick Foles guides them to a Super Bowl title. From that moment forward, there was speculation about Carson Wentz or Nick Foles because where do you go? How do you just get rid of a Super Bowl champion? They kept Nick Foles. Carson Wentz comes back. He was struggling because the injury was nasty. He had to recover from that, tried to overcompensate. He gets hurt again. Nick Foles comes to the rescue again, gets them to the playoffs, gets a huge victory over New Orleans. Uh, I think it was, was it Chicago in the playoffs before they lost to New Orleans, right? It was Chicago when they missed the field goal in the last second and the Eagles won that playoff. Almost beat New Orleans, right. too. So what I'm, and they almost beat New Orleans. So what I'm trying to say is that really what we're talking about with Carson Wentz, it's really about right now. Two years ago, the injury happened. Uh, three years ago, rather. Then two years ago, it happened again. And then last year, okay, he worked with Smoke and Mirrors, got him to the playoffs, and a, a, an epic collapse that just made my holiday season for the Cowboys to lose before Thanksgiving all the way through Christmas. I mean, my God, it was one of the best holidays I've ever had in my life. I mean, it was just beautiful, okay? <laughs> but then you have that, and then now here we talk about. I'm not saying you're wrong about what we're seeing about Carson Wentz now. 
I'm saying it's wrong to act like, Damian. oh, that's what we've been Damian, seeing. Damian, one him. thing I'll say real quick is I saw this at the end of last year. So did the front office. So did the right. GM, Howie Roseman, and they acted on it. What I'm seeing now is a continuation of what I saw then. Uh, Damian, I'm not seeing anything new. <clears throat> Listen, let me um, – I'm not a big stats guy. I like – you know, I, I go where my eyes tell me to go. But I'm going to read a couple stats to you that are kind of eye-opening as far as Carson Wentz is concerned. No QB has thrown more interceptions than Carson Wentz. No QB has been sacked more than Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz has 20 off-target throws, most in the NFL. That's in the first two weeks of the yeah. season. Eight sacks with no throwaways. But are, you, the, are the sacks let, let me, his fault? And see, it brings me to my it brings me to the next talking talking point because okay. a lot of people have talked about well they've had they sustained a couple season-ending injuries along the offensive line. And then it's affected the pass, uh, pass protection. That has not been the case. The Eagles' offensive line has done a really good job in pass protection. What we're seeing from Carson Wentz is, A, he hasn't been accurate, and, B, he's doing what we call in the NFL hero ball. He's, mm -hmm. all, he's constantly looking for the big play all the time, constantly. Instead of taking that profit on a particular play, he's looking to make the home run. And you can't do that in the National Football League. You just can't do that. And if we go back to when Carson Wentz was injured, do you know that Carson Wentz has just been an average quarterback? 14 and 15 has been his record. He has the same QBR as Jameis Winston mm. during that time. So, listen, Philadelphia is, is heavily invested in Carson Wentz. Money is going to play a huge factor in this whole thing. You can... You, we can talk about the stats. We can talk about how Carson Wentz has been playing. But ultimately, money is going to play a huge factor. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.